Axilla. The axilla, also known as the armpit, is a space between the upper part of the arm and the lateral thoracic wall. It is usually filled with fat. Boundaries. The apex is also known as the cervical axillary canal. It is triangular in shape and is a passage between the neck and the axilla. It is directed medially and upwards. Boundaries of the apex are anteriorly, clavicle, posteriorly, the superior border of the scapula, medially, the outer border of the first rib. Structures passing through are axillary vessels, cords of the brachial plexus, long thoracic nerve, efferent subclavian lymph trunk. Base. It is situated in the lower end of the axilla and is directed downwards. It is formed by the skin and axillary fascia. It presents a concavity bounded anteriorly by the anterior axillary fold and posteriorly by the posterior axillary fold. Anterior axillary fold is formed by the lower border of the pectoralis major muscle. The posterior axillary fold is formed by the latissimus dorsi and teres major tendons. Medially, the base is bound by the chest wall. Anterior wall. Superficial plane consists of the pectoralis major muscle. The deep plane consists of pectoralis minor, subclavius, clavi pectoral fascia, and suspensory ligament of the axilla. Posterior wall. Subscapularis, latissimus dorsi, teres major. Medial wall. Upper four to five ribs along with their intercostal muscles. Upper part of serratus anterior. The lateral wall. It is narrow as the anterior and posterior walls converge on this wall. It is formed by intertubercular sulcus of the humerus, tendon of the long head of biceps brachii, short head of biceps brachii, and coracobrachialis. Contents of the axilla. Axillary artery and its branches axillary vein and its tributaries, cords of the brachial plexus and their branches, long thoracic nerve, intercostal brachial nerves, axillary lymph nodes and associated efferent and efferents, axillary fat, axillary tail of spence. Axillary lymph nodes. These are embedded in the fibrofatty tissue of the axilla and are divided into five groups anterior or pectoral group. They lie at the lower border of the pectoralis minor. They drain the limb from the upper half of the anterior part of the trunk and a major part of the mammary gland. The axillary tail of Spence is in contact with these nodes, hence a malignancy of the breast might be mistaken for an enlarged lymph node. Posterior or subscapular group. They lie on the posterior axillary fold situated along the subscapular vein. They drain lymph from the upper part of the posterior side of the trunk and the axillary tail of spence. Lateral group lie along the axillary vein in relation to the upper part of the humerus. They drain lymph from the upper limb. Central group. They lie in the upper part of the axilla and receive lymph from other groups and drains into the apical group. The intercostal brachial nerve lies between these nodes, hence an enlargement of these nodes, like in cancer, can cause compression to the nerve and will result in pain along the inner border of the arm. Apical or infraclavicular group. They lie deep to the clavipectoral fascia in the apex of the axilla. They drain lymph from the upper part of the breast and rest of the breast through lymph from the central group. They drain into the subclavian lymph trunk on the right side and thoracic duct on the left side. Clinical correlation. The axillary nodes drain not only the upper limb but also the breast and the trunk up till the umbilicus. So infection or malignancy of these areas will result in involvement of these nodes. Nodal enlargement is especially seen in breast carcinoma. Bimanual examination of these lymph nodes is essential in clinical practice. 
The left axillary nodes should be palpated using the right hand and the right axillary nodes should be palpated using the left hand. Axillary abscess. This is mainly caused by an infection of the axillary nodes. Pain is usually felt when the abscess grows large in size. The pus may travel into the neck or the arm via the axillary sheath or may tear through the clavipectoral fascia and collect between the pectoralis muscles. As the base of the axilla is the most dependent part, an incision to drain the abscess is usually given at the base midway between the anterior and posterior axillary folds closer to the medial wall to avoid injury to the vessels. Surgical approach to the axilla. This should be done by an incision on the skin of the floor or base of the axilla. This is usually needed to excise affected lymph nodes in the case of carcinoma breast. These structures are at risk during excision. Intercostal brachial nerve, long thoracic nerve, thoracodorsal nerve, thoracodorsal artery.